Good evening, everyone. This is Bill Breeden. Thank you for joining me tonight. Welcome to Constellation Tour number 63. Tonight, we're going to go over the constellation Hydra, the water snake, located in the South Celestial Hemisphere. Hydra is far enough north to see from Miami. Um, you can actually see it from further north than that, but if you want a good look at it, you really do need to get a little bit further south. So we're going to be in Miami tonight. It's best viewed between March and May. So we have Stellarium here set up for our tour for the 29th of April of 2020 at about 10.38 p.m. Set for a 60 degree true field of view simulating the view you would have with the naked eye from a suburban location. So Hydra is large but faint. So how do you go about finding Hydra? So in, it's a springtime constellation for those uh, folks in the northern hemisphere. So what you do is you look south. And to find Hydra, I usually start by finding Corvus the crow. And that is found by looking for these four stars here in a, in a square. That is Corvus. It sort of looks like the keystone of Hercules, but it's shaped a little bit different. So as I said, Hydra is very large. So once you've found Corvus the Crow by looking south, you want to look a little bit toward the west. Actually, you want to look all the way to the west and look for the Gemini twins. And here they are, Pollux and Castor. And Hydra basically runs from just to the left of Pollux and Castor through this empty area of sky all the way to the, the area just underneath Corvus the Crow. So it's this whole long part of the sky all the way over to about here. Corvus, Corvus is a snake. It's the water snake, so it's long and thin. So as you can see, there are no really bright stars in this part of the sky, although you, you should be able to see the small circle of Hydra's head that may even be hard to find from the suburbs. It may be easier to find from a dark location. So let's, let's turn on our constellation lines. Let's go back to the south. And here you can see Corvus right here. And this long line here that's going up underneath Corvus, underneath Crater, and all the way over to here. Here's Hydra's head right here. And here's Pollux and Castor Gemini over here. And that the reason I went for those is because they're bright enough to actually stand out. Even though they're a little distant from Hydra's head, you've got the constellation Cancer in between. You do have Leo the lion above Hydra with the bright star Regulus. And if you drop straight down from Regulus, you come to, to Hydra. So as I said, Hydra is a large constellation. Let's have a look at the constellation boundaries. And even though they've got the word Hydra here inside the border for sextons, um, they're doing that because of the the uh, the lines, the actual constellation lines. Actually, looks better like that. But to see where the constellation actually is bound, you want to look here. So this this whole area here that I'm tracing out with my mouse, all the way over, way beyond Corvus, all the way over here just beneath Libra, this whole long part of the sky here, this is all Hydra. And as you can see in, inside this, this boundary here, you can barely fit it inside a 60 degree field of view. And I think I remember reading that once that it takes your entire naked eye field of view to take in all of Hydra, the water snake. 
but you'll see there's only one star here that's that's easily visible and I believe that's Alphard right that's Alpha um, Hydra or Alphard and let's see it's actually just part of the snake's body here so here's Alphard right here and you have Hydra's head here the next brightest star looks like this one and that's not even the beta star so that's yeah maybe this is oh, this is Alphard here let's see it's not even coming up with what that star is it's coming up with a satellite I guess those are too faint I gotta turn change my settings to see what those are so so that's how you go about finding Hydra There is a double star in Hydra that's uh, worth taking a look at. Now with a constellation that covers this much sky, you would think that there would be a lot of objects to look at, and there are a few. So we're going to start with a double star, Epsilon Hydra. We're going to zoom into a six degree field of view here to simulate the view through the finder scope. Um, Epsilon Hydra is also called Ashleisha. It's kind of a nice sounding name. Um, this is located 135 light years from Earth with a magnitude of 6.6. .6. So it is below visibility for naked eye. So let's see if it splits in Stellarium. It does. So this would be an interesting star to uh, examine next time you're out in the spring. It's Epsilon Hydra. So that's the only double star I have on my list tonight. Um, within Hydra, but I do have several deep sky objects, including three Messier objects. So let's let's go to a dark site. Let's make it dark. And let's see if we can find Hydra from a dark site. Let's start by looking south again and finding Corvus. And here's Corvus right here, these four stars that form sort of the same shape as the keystone of Hercules. And now let's go way back over here towards Pollux and Castor. And here's Pollux and Castor here. And if we look up a little higher, we should see Regulus and the backward question mark of Leo. So coming straight down from Regulus and coming over from Pollux and Castor, you come to this little circle here. So that's the head of Hydra. So now that you have the head and you have Corvus, you can see that the snake is running like this, all the way underneath Corvus and then even a little bit beyond. So let's see how close we are. So here's the four stars of Corvus. And here's Pollux and Castor of Gemini. Here's Regulus of Leo. And here's Hydra's head here. And the water snake is running all the way underneath Corvus and Crater to finally end over here just to the left of Corvus. That's a fun one to locate in the sky. It's a very long and large constellation, even though it's not real. It really doesn't stand out. You have to employ these, these little tricks to find it. So let's find the first Messier object within Hydra, and that is M48.
this is an open cluster shining at magnitude 5.8, located 1,500 light years from Earth. And here's the open cluster as seen through a pair of binoculars or a finder scope. And let's put in an eyepiece. Let's go with a little bit less power. There we go. It looks really good with a 13 millimeter Nagler. This is an eyepiece that has an 82 degree apparent field of view, giving you a true field of view of just over half a degree of sky. Really nice view of this open cluster. M48. Okay, where are we in Hydra? Here's Pollux and Castor here. And Regulus is up here, so here's the head of Hydra. So we're way down here at the bottom edge of the constellation. Yeah, here's the head of Hydra. All of this here, all this part of the sky here is all part of Hydra. And M48 is just at the bottom edge of it, right on the border of Hydra and Monoceros. Okay, we have another Messier object to look for, and this is another open cluster. It's M68. And this looks like it's on the tail end of Hydra. As you can see, we're, we're just below Corvus here. It would actually be easier to star hop to M68 by coming off this bottom star here of Corvus. Yeah, you're just, you're just across the border from Corvus into Hydra here. And you go a little bit further down and you're into Centaurus. Hydra is a really narrow constellation right here in this area. So let's have a look at M68 through the finder. It's magnitude 7.3. And um, I was incorrect. This is not an open cluster. This is a globular cluster. And it's... Um, Let's see, it's located 33,600 light years from Earth, so way too far away to be an open cluster. Globular clusters tend to be located in the tens of thousands range away from Earth. Tens of thousands of light years rather than just thousands of light years. So let's have a look at M68 through an eyepiece. And this one, being a globular, would probably be better to put a little bit more power on it. So let's go with a 9 millimeter delight. 62 degree apparent field of view with a true field of view of just over a fourth of a degree. M68 globular cluster. Okay, uh, we have one more Messier object, and that's M83, and I believe this one's a galaxy. Yeah, this is a, a 7.5 magnitude galaxy located... 15 million light years away. And it looks really nice in our finder scope. So this one looks like it would really respond well to a lower power eyepiece. So let's go with a 19 millimeter panoptic with a 68 degree apparent field of view and a true field of view of about two thirds of a degree.
or about 40 arc minutes of sky. This almost looks like a grand design spiral. And it looks like it looks like there was some sort of disturbance here with one of the arms. M83. Let's see, where are we in Hydra? Here's Corvus here, so we're way over here by the tail. And actually, there's a long way to go yet. Hydra really is big. Takes some getting used to. Okay, those are all the Messier objects that are within Hydra. Um, I've got a couple of uh, other deep sky objects, and let's start with NGC 3242. And this is a popular one among amateur astronomers. This is also known as Caldwell 59, or the Ghost of Jupiter. This is a planetary nebula, which is basically a dying star, shining at magnitude 8.6, 3,500 light years from Earth. And planetary nebula tend to be really teeny tiny, um, but also um, surprisingly easy to see. So you're seeing this little, little uh, kind of bluish green dot here that looks sort of like a star or a planet um, in the finder. So planetary nebulas really respond to high power eyepieces. So let's do that. Let's go with our nine millimeter um, Teleview Delight eyepiece with a uh, true field of view of just over a quarter of a degree. So you really get a good view of the ghost of Jupiter with a higher power eyepiece. Well, I thought I had one more object on my list um, tonight um, within Hydra, but that was the last one. Let's see where we are in the constellation. We're sort of in the middle of it. Here's Corvus over here, and here's Hydra's head here. So I appreciate you um, hanging in there with me through these constellation tours. Um, this concludes the tour for tonight. Good night and good seeing.